Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, at your service. I'm going to tell you the meaning of the term virtual height when it comes to an ionospheric layer, and in particular, the E the F1 or the F2 layers of the ionosphere, which can range in altitude from about 100 or so kilometers to well over 300 kilometers, depending on the layer. The E layer being the lowest and predominant during the daytime, the F1 and F2 layers can predominate at various times of day, depending on the frequency and on solar activity. The height of this layer above the Earth uh, is kind of difficult to determine literally because it, the layer doesn't just appear like a flat reflective screen or sheet of metal. It's diffuse. It's an ionized gas and it, it has a certain thickness and if you send a signal at a low enough frequency straight up at this layer and then it returns to Earth again, it takes a certain amount of time. And you can measure the apparent height or virtual height based on that length of time that you... Uh, you can actually measure the time and you get that by simply multiplying the speed of light in meters per second times the length of time it takes for the ray to go up and back in seconds divided by 2. The reason it's divided by 2 is because the whole round trip is what you're measuring so that's what you get the time for, and you have to divide that by two in order to get the height. Uh, you, you're measuring twice uh, the height because it goes up and back. Well, when you do that, when um, you get a particular, a, a rather exact value for the height, because the radio signal, as it goes up and comes back, takes a little bit of time to turn around and then return to Earth. If you, re if you increase the frequency sufficiently, then the signal is going to pass on into space through the layer. And again, now that frequency determines the, uh, is determined by the amount of solar activity, the time of day, the frequency itself, and the density of the, the ionospheric layer, um, a whole bunch of different variables. If you raise the frequency high enough, that signal will pass on into space at progressively greater and greater angles of incidence measured with respect to the vertical, and it bends off a little bit as it passes on into space. At angles uh, smaller than uh, the critical angle at which it goes off into space, the signal will go off into space. At angles greater, and angles measured with respect to the vertical, at angles greater, it will be returned to Earth. Eventually, you'll get an, uh, a frequency that's so high that the layer will not return signals to Earth at any frequency. But we want it, we're interested in frequencies where the signal returns to Earth even when it's transmitted straight up. If you transmit a signal straight up and, it, and you hear your, the echo of your own signal back after a length of time t in seconds, you can determine the virtual height or the apparent height of that layer, h sub v, in meters by multiplying the speed of light in meters per second, which is roughly 3 times 10 to the 8th, times the length of time in seconds.
and dividing by 2. So the units that we use, t in seconds, c in meters per second, well, and h sub v in meters. You divide that figure by 1000 and you'll get the height, virtual height in kilometers. So that's what virtual height means. It means in a, the effective or the apparent height. And that's always a little bit greater than the lowest level of ionization with respect to the Earth because the signal as it goes up into the ionosphere has to turn around and come back. It, does, it isn't literally reflected like it would be off of a mirror. It has to turn around and come back. It, that's what happens with all signals in the, the ionosphere. They're not reflected per se, although we may use that term. They are refracted and they come back to Earth very much uh, very much like sound would be in stratified layers of the troposphere. I don't know if you've ever heard, say, the boom of some distant explosion or mysterious event or even the roar of a distant city over the horizon because of tropospheric uh, bending effects of sound waves. Well, what happens to radio waves in the ionosphere is rather similar to that. Um, and in fact, that, that effect, that return effect, can also occur in the troposphere, and that's, of course, called tropospheric bending. But we're interested in ionospheric propagations, predominantly the E layer, the F1 layer, and the F2 layer. These layers predominate at the so-called short wave bands, frequency bands, and that's uh, mainly at high frequencies, 3 to 30 megahertz, although it can on occasion go down as low as 1.8, the 1.8 megahertz band 160 meters. It happens on the standard AM broadcast band at 535 kilohertz to about 1.609 megahertz. 1.609, where the heck did I come up with that? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a little greater than that. 1.60 1.6 one zero or something like that. Well, whatever it may be, Stan Jabalisco is finished. I hope you understand the meaning now of the term virtual height when it comes to radio waves propagating over the horizon by means of our blessed ionosphere. We give the sunspots credit for that. We are entering, by the way, a prolonged period of sunspot minimum activity. This may last, according to some, for as much as half a century in which our sun will make propagation of radio waves at high frequencies much less spectacular than it has been for many years. Uh, one of the prognosticators of this is a man named Piers Corbin, who also says that sunspots correlate with global temperature and that we can expect a, a prolonged period of global cooling. What greater sin could I commit? than to conclude a video with the term 
global cooling, tantamount to blasphemy in today's enlightened society. Stangibalisco W1GV saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which, in my native CW fist, shall forever after mean, da-da-da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da.